Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV2. Alan Ruff is alongside me and I'm delighted to see our very special boot room guest is none other than the Scotland manager, Gordon Strachan. Um, and it's fitting that you're on on such a day as this. Gordon, 34 years ago, um, Aberdeen won the Cup Winners' Cup. It's a far better day, actually. It's <laughs> lovely and sunny outside. It was a real wet, horrible night that night. And, uh, and something special happened. And uh, that's 34 years ago. Um, trying to get us together to celebrate is a bit difficult these days for, <laughs> for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but it was a, a fantastic time. But actually, if you think about it, it was a fantastic time for Scottish football then. I mean, it really was. There were some good teams going on, but strong teams, good yeah. players, good uh, characters. I mean, if you... Uh, if you and Ruffy was there as well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that sums it up terribly. I was going to say to you, you know, if you think about the teams that you actually, you know, played in with Aberdeen, you mm -hmm. won the league, and you think about the teams that you defeated in Aye. Europe, I mean, you think about the players that were available in Scotland that you could have now, it would have been unbelievable. But not just Europe, you know, we put Real Madrid and uh, uh, Bayern Munich, but I'm telling you that the Celtic team was a strong team. Think about Nicholas, McStay, Aitken, um, Proven, um, always a bundle of laughs. Um, <laughs> um, but real, real players, Rangers players, Dundee United had, they were getting finals as well. And other teams had characters like Alan in it, it was Andy Ritchie, Willie Pettigrew. There were some good, good players going about. Real, it was character testing football at that time with the pitches and the tackles, and you had to be able to play and be a bit of a character. But saying that, I, and I don't want to be honest yesterday, some of the football I see just now on, on television with Bayern Munich and Barcelona, it's the best I've ever seen. There's some of the world's greatest players playing now. Maybe we so, didn't realise. No, no, I was going to say, you know, that night in particular, I mean, everybody's looking at Real Madrid and Barcelona now. I mean, what like was it then? Real Madrid. I mean, if you'd have said you'd been drawn against Real Madrid, you'd be... <sighs> yeah, I would say that the Real Madrid team's far better than theirs just now, though. And then part of Alex's thing was, listen, um, don't play the jersey. Play the player in the jersey. Remember that. It, it, it's, it wasn't it. Hento and Puskas and all that playing. Sometimes you, you can get the, the team itself can scare you or the club can scare you, but you have to play the team. So I think that's what he kept saying that, that and the build up to that play the team, know, know the club. This is completely different. I'm glad you say that because w when I look back at the Real Madrid side uh, that you played in the final, um, I mean, there were some top, top players mm. in it. I mean, here's, here's the 11. Right. who started um, uh, on that night uh, for Real Madrid. And, uh, and I'm looking there and I'm saying, you know, you can take us through them. I, I, right away, screaming out at me is uh, Juanito, Santiana, Stilica and Mekon. Yeah, yeah, Stilica was a top player. And Camacho, he was, he was hard as nails. I mean, he was, he was in that kind of Juventus type defender. Yeah, Gentile. Maybe not as rough as him. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, um, but I, I think Mark and him had a, a, a nice battle with each other that night, Mark McGee. Um, I've seen Camacho recently and he's in far better nick than Mark at the moment. Oh, I would fancy Camacho right now, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but that was a, a right, right good side as well. But I think that Real Madrid side I watched the other night there, it's just phenomenal. But I like watching them in, in Barcelona. I just think these teams are fantastic. The Bayern Munich team that's obviously not up there had uh, Rummenigger and Breitner and people like that. It's close to Eugen Tyler in that Eugen side. Eugen was in yeah. there. Um, they were a fan fantastic, fantastic side. Uh, and many a Don's fan looks back on it with great fondness. And the reason why is because you're talking about all the great players that were in the opposition. Yeah. I mean, look at the starting eleven, and, um, <clears throat> and I have to include John Hewitt because he, he came on as a substitute. Yeah. But look at your starting eleven. Look at the quality you have in that team. Yeah, um, the, the, we're all we're all different sorts of players. But everybody was a character in their own right. Um, and they'd been <coughs> tested for that moment. They'd been tested with Sir Alex. They'd been tested through life and playing in Highland League and, and being dropped. And Sir Alex always on top of you. So all it was character building for that moment. And, and yet sometimes your character's tested for one moment, what you think in your life. And as far as I'm concerned, all the tests that everybody had up to that moment, I think I was speaking to you earlier on about your true character comes up on the playing field. You can have as many Twitter followers as you want, say as much as you want in the press, do what you want, be on TV, be a celebrity, but on the football field, your character is tested. 
And that, they guys, plus the subs, there was Dougie Bell, Stuart Kennedy, uh, John Hewitt, they were all there. They could all be relied on and never, ever let their team met down. No matter what circumstances, they would never let another team met down. And that was how well, we were different from most teams we played against. Because there always seemed to be a weakness somewhere or some personality was a weakness in another team. But we never really had one. You, you, I was going to say that mentally were you strong because every time I speak to an 83 Cup Winners Cup yeah. uh, player, you know, they talk about, they laugh sometimes at the hairdryer treatment oh, that was handed I, out. I wouldn't I mean, have missed it for the world. I really wouldn't have missed it for the world. People, I don't know if you get away with that human rights now. <laughs> I, I actually think we get <clears throat> some of the things that went on in our drift. Not as Sir Alex, but things we used to say to each other and vice versa, back to Sir Alex. And it, it really was, but I've got to say when it came to the crunch, um, he was the voice that you heard above everything else. But he attested you from the moment he met you till that, that night. You know, if I met him in 77, mm -hmm. I think. He tested you every day. And he talked about sports psychologists. It's funny enough, he only hears about sports psychologists when the team's doing well, don't you? <laughs> Anybody gets really good, never, the sports psychologist never puts his hand up and goes, that, that was me, I, I was poor there. He was the best sports psychologist mm -hmm. in the world. But he didn't have to be nice to everybody and the, the whole club, so everybody felt good about it, there's a glow. You only need to mm -hmm. get the 11 or 12 or 13 ready for that game. So he's the best sports psychologist I have ever mm -hmm. seen by a million miles. And he, and he wasn't just like that with them. Any, any visiting bus coming, you know, the, the old dressing room was the tunnel, you had to walk down the tunnel. He'd be waiting in the away team coming. And he'd be waiting when you come in and then you come off the bus because he knew you. He'd start having a go at you doing, <laughs> and winding you up before you go to your away dressing room. So we're going, if he's like that with us, we're like oh. saying that dressing room. <laughs> but as I said, I, I could do after dinner speaking <clears throat> for the rest of my life on that. And people go, oh, it's a bit rough. I'm going, I didn't think that was a bit rough. I just thought everybody got it. I got probably more than anybody else, but I probably mm -hmm. deserved it. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't have missed it for the world. It was absolutely mm -hmm. terrific. And you, I, I was saying you had to be in the away dressing room when it kicked off because the two <laughs> dressing rooms were so... We could hear we could hear everything in the dressing room and we'd be sitting there going, they're winning 3 nothing, And, and yeah. they're get, and they're getting it. You yeah. know, and we were well, you remember there. that cup final we won in? 83, was it? And we thought mm -hmm. we'd done well because mm -hmm. we played six or seven games, won the European Cup got beat by a point in the league. I thought, we've done no bad. Then won a cup. And then I got the dress and I was we shattered. And I said, Archie, could you open that bottle of champagne? And Archie went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you man, you can't. He's out there going bonkers. <laughs> and he went absolutely bonkers. And he kept it going. He come in after the cup final. He wouldn't let the wives on the team bus. They're, they're not getting on. Mm -hmm. They're not getting on with a bunch of losers like you. Like that. <laughs> I'm sure I've won this medal somewhere a lot. Did we win? You know, did we win the day? And your wife's on the bus as you're going away to St Andrews Tours away. There going. But you never had phones in these days. You just have to explain that he's a nutcase and he's not letting anybody on. <laughs> um, and then after it, quiet. But that was all part of this thing about mm. it, you, you, the, the, the demands to play every game. And tiredness doesn't need to come in yeah. there. Did he make you a better player? Yeah, of course he did. Yeah. He made, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. He made me a better player. Anybody come and made them, uh, I've got to say, turn us into kind of devils at times. Then Sometimes you didn't like yourself or something. I never tackled anybody, but I used to say some ridiculously bad things to people because they used to kick me. So, yeah, so they'd make you this devil that would come out on a football field. They were all decent guys off it. But on the football field, but even to each other, yeah. was totally horrendous. You know, I never, me and Steve Archibald, we never spoke to each other for four months. And he says, look, me and you shouldn't speak to each other. And I went, that's not a big deal to me. <laughs> um, because I never passed the body on once. <laughs> so that was the dressing room. And that was, a, a, I seen, uh, do, you, do you remember the, the car park opposite Petrodri? Yeah. We used to play five or six on a Friday. Now, you wouldn't get that now. We used to kick ten bells at each other. And Stuart Kennedy said something to Bobby Clark. And it kicked off, and it, Bobby chased them over the golf course. <laughs> and it, and, it, and it, it went past the first hole, second hole, still couldn't catch them. And uh, Bobby come back about half an hour later, still no catch, caught Stuart. But that, and again, it was just fantastic. The good, see, the good thing about football, and if you ask me, ask me about games, I find it very hard to pick up games and who scored and what. But if that kind of incident and all the laughing and joking is. It's just priceless. Yeah, I've got, I've got to, um, I've got to take a, a quick break, but I, I can't wait to um, relay a story to you, and, and hopefully you can shed some light on as well. Uh, lots to talk about with Gordon Strachan. We'll touch on uh, Scotland against England. Of some 
magnificent photographs behind me that I'm, I'm sure will jog his memory uh, and we might get a few other stories out of him as well. Hopefully you can join us after this uh, quick break. Uh, Ruffy is alongside me. Scotland against England is live on STV on the 10th of June. We're looking forward to it and we're keeping our fingers crossed uh, that we're celebrating at the end of it with a good Scotland win in front of the Tartan Army. We'll get into that with the Scotland manager Gordon Strachan after this quick break. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV2. Gordon Strachan, the Scotland manager, is our guest. Um, you know what it's like. You, you get great stories from people and they always mm. laugh um, uh, when they're telling them, though it must have been painful at the time. Um, did you, <laughs> there's did, a, pain, there's did a you, painful one coming from there, 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 there is, there is, because Mark, Mark McGee uh, told me that Fergie in his infinite wisdom one night decided to, to, to change the tactics for an away game in Europe. And and you were getting battered. Oh, yeah. um, and I think, and, and I think I think what happened was you eventually changed the system, and 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 let him have what for going going down the track side. Oh yeah. <laughs> and when he was telling yeah, me. Yeah 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 that's a good one yeah I, I, I need to keep this to, but it, it goes on forever. <laughs> it's basically that we're, we're three nothing for the the um the first leg and um and we beat Argus Bateste which is. In Transylvania somewhere, and uh, we got there. We just the day before, it was just select said, "We're going, we'll get through, but we'll make sure we get through. We've got to play because we always play four four two. And me tucking in a bit, Peter being out there. We've got to play four three three. Not got a clue. Anyway, so it went on for about half an hour, and we're two nothing down after half an hour. And I was unfortunate to be the one at the side telling me where to run, where to go in, go in, go out, go back, go sideways, tell McGee he's doing that wrong, tell where to get in there. And after all, you I just don't know but it's not our fault, it's your time. This is being being polite as I can, I right? Um, but at that point, as soon as it could, the words came out of my mouth, all the subs and Archie Knox went, oh, Jesus. And anyway, um, half time come round and I, 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 I thought he might forget, but absolutely no chance of forgetting because this was about 20 minutes and... And we kind of played something like Tiger Aberdeen, where um, if you made a mistake just before half time, you were getting it. But if somebody somehow made a bigger mistake just before that, he was, it was like, Tiger, oh, brilliant, <laughs> you're getting it. <laughs> but nothing could have saved me that night. I, I, I really got that was the, the kind of start of the hairdryer, plus other things coming on my direction. I, the, the, the flying objects missed me. They hit Willie and Alec, <laughs> which was unfortunate because Willie was upset his perm got <laughs> messed about. But that was that is the abbreviated version. What? But again, love it. I love it. I love thinking about me being so scared as I was and, mm -hmm. and people were looking at me and and I'm looking around the dressing room and, and basically the players were feeling sorry for me mm -hmm. at that point. It's not often you get that feel, real... But, but, but basically footballers, I mean, when that hairdryer stuff's going about and in a dressing room at half time, it's absolutely magic. If it's no use getting it because you see somebody on the other <laughs> side, you just soak it all the, 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 in. You know in Subble Island when you're sitting down and the two guys either side of you move that way <laughs> and you go, we're going like, stay, stay close together, be a team, get in, get close. <laughs> My midfield partner's disappeared. Uh, I remember that day when I told but you. But great, honestly. listen, and when you, you speak to us, Alex, now you, you'll start laughing and things like that and we all laugh at all the things we said and done and as long as it was in the right reasons and you wanted the team to win and it wasn't personal it was fine mm. so it was good we used to turn on each other that way yeah was, was there a player there that you thoroughly enjoyed playing alongside I mean everybody talks about how special you were as a player but was there something no. in that Aberdeen said people, you thought... pe people made me uh, what, how, how I went through it. and the fortunate thing is I played till I was 40 in English Premier League every right back I played with never made 30 the, uh, I kind of ran them to the ground uh, I feel sorry for them, and I, I, I do apologise to all the right backs <laughs> I've ever played with, um, because they never made thirty. Um, but everybody I've played with helped me. Um, uh, Stuart Kennedy, uh, at, at I believe, a fantastic, fantastic player. Brilliant. I mean, not as good as he thinks he is, yeah. but what a good player he was. <laughs> um, and then it was uh, I got ready uh, Mick Duxbury. Stuart packed in at Aberdeen. I got ready Mick Duxbury. He was in England international. He went crashing. John Sieverbeck, he played for a while. Den Dennis International. Fergie told him he'd never play again for Man United. That was another one. Mel Sterling, he's not been the same since he played with me. So all these guys, thank you very much, but I'm sorry. Am, am, I, right, am I right in saying that you're in the English Hall of Fame? Aye. How's that? There you go. Unbelievable. 
No, I'm saying I'm saying that because when we sit at our Scottish Hall of Fame and yeah. somebody from England gets put in it, everybody's going, oh, what's that all about? Come no, on. no, there's a, there's a fine collection. There's even more now because it's such a wonderful, wonderful league. Uh, the best players in the world, apart from the, the three uh, in, in Spain, um, playing that league. And, and people say to me, there's, oh, there's not so many Scottish players going down there now. I said, well, there's a big reason. When I went down there, you had to be the best and one of the best in Britain to play for Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal. Now you have to be one of the best in the world. So the bar's risen from there to there now. We yeah. have still players going down to England, unfortunately, to championship. But the, the standard overall as a spectacle, spectacle and technically, it's got better in England. You won an FA Cup with Man United. Yeah. Was Leeds your best time that you enjoyed the most? I find that very hard. It's the most fulfilling because I don't know what Alan said. When you join a club, nobody says, Alan, you're joining us, we must do this. You just join and go, thank you very much, that's great. Signing fees over there, I'll go and play now. Um, but when I got to Leeds, people said, listen, you're signing for this, but what we want in return is you to get us back into the Premier. So I've never had that before. When Aberdeen, Manchester United, anywhere else, it's always been, you're signing for this, we're a club, and we're, we're going and playing. We see how it is. It's the first time anybody said to me, that's what we want to do. And we're, we're saying to you, you've got to lead us that way. And to get that kind of, I don't know, the onus went on me, I respect about it. I kind of, I went, oh, yeah. But it was also nerve wracking at the same time. It's the first time anybody said to me, we must do that. That's what you're getting paid for. Yeah. We must do that or, or we're in trouble as a club. What age were you? When I went to Leeds? Yeah. 32. So, uh, but I didn't know there was a rivalry between Leeds and Man United yeah. because we'd never played each other in, in the league because the two teams were never in the same league. Yeah. And, um, but that, that onus went on me and that, it's the most fulfilling. I've enjoyed myself everywhere. I mean, everywhere I've been. And it's, it's been just a, a wonderful, wonderful experience that I've had, you know, from a 13-year-old kid just kicking a ball about. Because you never had these things about... That, nobody nobody <coughs> said to me, I have an academy jersey on it, eight-year-old, I'm Motherwell or Celtic or whatever. Nobody said to me, you're going to be a football. I just enjoyed it for a while. I only went with about 15. I went, oh, I, I, I can maybe make this. Yeah. And then I just go. And people said, do you have any ambition? No. And if some, somebody thinks that it's lacking ambition, but it's mm -hmm. no, I just put there every day and enjoy it as much as I can. And you end up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you look at that side, I don't yeah. think anybody thought they were going to win the, the old first division, which would have been the, the Legion 81? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were fantastic. I mean, you had McAllister in there. You, obviously, Eric Canton is there as well. Big, uh, big Eric there, big Alf. Looks like Alf, that creature that used to be on TV, Alf. Um, but we had the midfield of uh, myself, Big Gary, David Batty, and Gary Speed. That was wonderful. But People talk about the midfield, but the, the rest of the guys, they all peaked that season. Yeah. Um, because the manager was terrific. He knew how to win games of football. Um, it wasn't the prettiest at times, because it wasn't a pretty time to play football in, in England. The late 80s, early 90s, it wasn't a pretty time because of the offsides and the pitches and all that. Stuff. But he, he, he got that team playing to their strengths. And also, behind the scenes, we had players who backed us up that nobody didn't really know about, but they kept the standard of training up kept that pushing each other until we got to that kind of machine that we had there. Yeah, did Howard Wilkinson have a huge impact on you for later life? First time, first time I've really... <coughs> was that a, I just thought every manager was brilliant now I worked with. I had yeah. Billy McNeil, Alec Ferguson, um, Ron Atkins. I just thought there were all these magnificent, huge characters, but there weren't they? I was really lucky. Uh, but he was the first one, and he kind of showed me the way to win games without just playing the game of football and how to get over, you know, look at the game in depth and how to win things. And, and he was a bit different. You know, really, first, it's the first one, I, obviously I've listened to my coaches, but really sit down and speak to him about what he was trying to do. But fitness was huge, yeah, huge. And, and, and we were the fittest team in that league. That's why we won it, really. We could, we could just run people like ground so they said, we can't deal with you uh, because you're too strong for us. And with that in mind, um, you, you know, you're very much a, a case in that season that I remember thinking, people thinking, surely Leeds can't win this. This was mm. a Leicester moment in 92, yeah. wasn't it? No, Leicester was far bit better than that. Because yeah. we, we invested um, at the time with Tony Arrigo and Rodney Wallace and the, the big money Good transfers players, yeah. at that time, not so much what Leicester did. And the, and the standard above us was OK. But it was, there was a change over between Liverpool and Man United. There was that wee bit going on, the same as Arsenal. Yeah. So there was a void there. 
to take over. Did that give you the most satisfaction in your playing career? No, no, that. The one uh, at the Championship, that was one of the, pre the Premier League as we know it now. Yeah. But the one below it, um, the, the, the Championship, because I wanted to get out of that. Yeah. Um, and probably that, again, going back to the most fulfilling, because that is what we need to do. Again, it was full of characters, Vinnie Jones, Chris Kamar, the two of them are superstars <laughs> in the world now. And, but that's what they brought to the dressing room. And David Byte was in midfield myself. So we had these, these three, Kamara, who could he just kick people, Vinnie, who just threatened everybody, Batty, who could do both, he could threaten, kick and play. Yeah. And, and me. So I just kind of floated about in between the three and they yeah. didn't come anywhere near us. <laughs> now, literally, people were scared to play us. It's an intimidating midfield, <laughs> well, isn't it, is, you know, yeah. Howard, Howard came in one night and he said to me, I told him, he says, are you going to start putting your foot in? I went, and what are they here for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a great line. Um, listen, uh, we're definitely going to end to uh, Scotland uh, as well. And there's a couple of photographs here I want to get stories off uh, Gordon mm. from. And of course, just in case you missed out on this point, Next to Gordon is Alan Ruffin. Ruffy has told a million and one great stories of World Cups, three World Cups, and Gordon um, was there at two of those World Cups with him. So with a bit of luck, Ruffy will share something with us in the next part of this programme, uh, and Gordon will probably either confirm it or <laughs> blow it right out of the water. We're about to find out. Join us after this quick break with our <coughs> boot room guest. Uh, the Scotland manager, Gordon Strachan, is with us and delighted to have him as well. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Gordon Strachan is here with us. Um, are you uh, a player who <coughs> thought consciously uh, about what you should put into your body, how you should look after it? You played until mm. you were 40. Some Somebody somewhere must have had and made an impression on you. Uh, yeah. I, uh, first of all, uh, I think later in my career, people th heard me talking about seaweed tablets, eating porridge in the morning, porridge of bananas, things like that. It made very little difference. It helped to do what I was going to do because this all started when I had a, a milk run. I used to run everywhere. I had this thing about keeping fit and being faster than anybody else and running. I, I kept that going through because I wasn't a really good professional. I was a, at Dundee. I got carried away with the, the lads, not with money, just yeah. with the lads, enjoyed myself. But I kept training all the way through there. Then I got to the point where I, I really enjoyed what I was doing and, and I realised it was a huge weapon being fit. Um, so, because people think it's just to run a boots, no. Um, I won't tell you, and any football tell you, you make mistakes when you're tired. Whether you make mistakes diving into tackles in the last minute because you're tired because your brain doesn't work, or you got you slash a shot in the last couple of minutes. If you keep yourself physically stronger, your technique will stay with you, and your mental strength will stay with you. So, I got into this this thing where I really wanted to be fitter than anybody else. But I had guys at Aberdeen that dragged me along or vice versa, I dragged them along. Same when I went to Leeds, Gary McAllister joined and um, we got him fitter and he'd become a far better player. He'll tell you that himself. Yeah. Um, so it, all that started out. So then I got to the stage where I really started looking after myself when uh, at Manchester United and I'd got my bed every afternoon. And Leslie was happy with that. Bang, bed, trained hard, sleep, get up for the kids coming in and do that was my routine all the time. And Gradually, as I got older and older, the alcohol just mm. not, it's not on. Mm. It really is not on um, <coughs> to, to, to have a, um, an athlete's, well, well, an athlete's engine. Let's yeah. say I had an athlete's mm -hmm. engine to, to keep that. So that became my strongest weapon as a footballer as I got older. And because, and I've said that to footballers now, what used to happen at 32, 33, you'd become a coach. Yeah. And you had all this knowledge you gained. But some of the players were that unfit, they couldn't play anymore. But if you can keep yourself fit, the knowledge that you gain, you, you take on the football field. That's what Gary McAllister did. That's why Gary went to Liverpool at 35. He got himself so fit, the knowledge he gained. Because I remember coming to say to me at, at the Coventry, he said, I think I might be off to Liverpool. He was 35 at the time, and I was a man. I went, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> 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 he's, he's just telling us to make me come to Liverpool. <laughs> and he did. It's only because he, 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 at that period of time, when 26, 27, he decided, he realised he had to take his fitness level up. And that's what made him a better player. His technique became, stayed with him longer. He was scoring goals at the end of the game. He was running games for 90 minutes. So that, that fitness thing, and I became really proud of that. I ended up playing until I was 40. No, because I wanted to play until I was 40. Yeah. There's a couple of things that helped you at that point. The love of the game and the people who you play with, they keep you going. The, the love that they've got it, plus they, they look after you as the game goes on and, and you can... Uh, 
draw from them that energy that you need to play football. How important was it for you playing for Scotland? What did you do? It's, it's, it's that proud moment you think, well, at it, 17, 18, 19, I thought I had no chance of playing for Scotland because, um, as I said, I started out brightly and then I kind of lost the plot. I know I lost the plot. I, was start, I had self-doubts at that point and I wasn't looking after myself as I should have. I didn't realise that. I just copied what other pros did at yeah. that point. Uh, I used to think everybody, everybody else in football went on Thursday night, um, but they don't. Um, so, uh, and then my, my career, when I went to Dundee, it was starting to, uh, Aberdeen, it started, to, wasn't it working well? You know, I was stagnant. And then Sir Alex come along and, 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 and made it a bit different. I, I, I got married and it made a big difference and it all kicked on from there. And uh, that's when I started, when, when Aberdeen started, I thought, but even then I thought, mm, some good players in there. And I got the call and it's just a fantastic, fantastic feeling. To, because then you think back, all oh, the people have helped you to get there. Yeah, I, I mean, I look at the photograph there, and I, I mean, we could have put a barrel load in, uh, <coughs> you, you know, in that 82 squad there. There's yeah. David Neary, I thought one of the most underrated uh, players, great player for Dundee United. Frankie Gray's there, Ruffy's in the squad. You've got, you know, Sunus. He was in the squad, that man played. No, absolutely. Well, oh, absolutely. There. Ruffy's there, he's, he's the man, he's the he's top man. <laughs> It'll always be shown for the next hundred years of Brazil's four goals going out. <laughs> and I've got to say, I was in the wall at the time, and I remember people saying, oh, the goal they should have got, no chance. Yeah. The ball was away up there, and it did, because we'd never seen players hitting balls like that before. Yeah. Did you, know, you feel like Graham Souness when he said, we made them angry, was that exactly? That was, that was what yeah. happened. Because if you see, David nearly goes away leaping to himself, and we're all going, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Back to the half line, here we go. I don't, I don't know if you remember... Uh, you see the warm up before the game. That was the warmest I've ever seen. The the warm up before. The, I, I remember watching you all running about uh, while I was in the goals, obviously. And the sweat was absolutely yeah. pouring. Out. The, the problem was, was because the grass was that long. It was like <clears> a carpet. It was keeping the heat in. Mm -hmm. And when you went down, oh, that's a bit hot. And and because it was that warm, you see, the boys took their tops off, um, in the tunnel before the game. And Big Art was a sub, and he even done it. And boys had the tops. Then the Brazilians come along with this, the six packs. We've never seen six packs before. <laughs> Doctor, there's something wrong with that guy. And they said, "Alec, oh, like, put your sit back on." By, by the way, big man, all that plucky chest and all that going on doesn't look yeah. good, you know. Yeah. Um, so uh, they were just different animals. Then I realised every time, every now and then, when you think you're a d decent player, something comes up to you say, "You must get better." And again, one of these things, a, a couple of times in my career, but that was one of the points where I must get fitter and stronger. Yeah. Because these guys, when you hit them. You just kind of flew back from them. They were just different physiques that I'd ever played against. It was like hitting a brick wall. Like junior or left back, who was a fantastic <coughs> player. He was just so solid. Yeah. And the, and and the other ones, the midfield players of Falcao, Socrates, and yeah, who was the yeah. other one? Yeah, yeah. They were all six foot three. Yeah. And you're going, oh. That's the only bad player on that side, I thought, was Serginho. <laughs> and guess who swapped the strip for him? <laughs> and the big fella's coming at me and says, can you swap? Oh, no, anybody but you, but you. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and everybody's at the end of the game, who you go? Because four people, man, Mark Zico for the last yeah. couple of minutes. And Falcao, Charezo, and all these kind of guys. And I've got the big fella strapping off. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but he's probably saying the same. I've got the wee guys there. <laughs> You know, so um, no, it was it was a, a wonderful, wonderful occasion that to be involved in that. But the heat, as you say, it was just too. Much. I mean, you're talking about the heat. Look at Mexico. I mean, look at the, this is you guys warming up in Mexico. Um, uh, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. That must have been uh, really draining oh, as well. Look I mean, at the look, shots. Look at that. I mean, that is a that's a trip back in time, isn't it? That's and look at the shots. You can tell what religion you are with them shots. <laughs> <laughs> That, and that's red hair as well. Yeah, uh, that is a long time ago. Is that a mullet? Isn't it? That's fantastic, Ruffy. See, yeah. everybody had that then. Funny enough, yeah. that wasn't as hot as Spain, you know. Everybody thinks Mexico was, wasn't right? it? Because the one game it rained, um, uh, maybe the Denmark game, uh, the, the Germany game was hot, but Whoa. nothing like Seville. Yeah. Nothing like that. Is that right? No. Uh, and of course, the Germany game is fantastic. I mean, you know, jumping out of my seat is a. Uh, yeah. As a boy then, I mean, that was absolutely fantastic. Did you know it took a, a little nick or do you tell everybody it, it actually just went straight in? I said I swerved it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, well, first of all, I was surprised that Big Roy actually passed to me <laughs> and made it successfully. 
And then and people say, well, what are you thinking about that point? Well, I was I think of David Charlie Nicholas saying that if we score, because we've seen players do it before jumping out of holdings, but sometimes these places have got moats around them. Yeah. And yet, I said, I'm like, one of us is like, day, jump out of there, and there's a boat behind it, and break the leg. So I was just checking to see if there's a moat behind it. But I, I slowed on the way back. People say, oh, what did you think at that point? I was thinking about my dad in Southern House Golf Club in Edinburgh. Is that right? I knew he'd be with all his mates. You know, I, I was just mm -hmm. imagining what he was feeling like at the time and how, how proud he would be that his, his son had scored a goal for Scotland. So I was thinking about my mates and, and my dad and his mates and my uncles who they all congregate in there. Yeah, and did, were you just glad in the end? I mean, 50 caps is something to be very, very proud of. I know yeah. your family would have been proud of Were you just delighted to get to the 50? Delighted to get there. I didn't think I'd get there because previous to that, I did, and you, you, players moan if they left it with two two games or something like that, and they, they go on Twitter and say they should be playing at the end. All bits and bobs. I was left out for nearly 18, 18 months, and I clocked it myself. It was quite easy. I wasn't playing well. I didn't need anybody to tell me, yeah. you know, God, you're not leaving you because, uh, no, I'm not playing well. There's other people, Jim Betts and people like that, playing better than you. I've got that, Bahamic State, I've not got a problem. Until I get better, then I can't give you a decision. So I'd be disappointed, and then I got to Leeds, because it, for the 18 months at Man United, I kept, my, my career was just floating about, not really doing anything. I was, I, it wasn't a great period in time for me. When I got to Leeds, I got that, that thing, that kick on again. Yeah. And it was nobody else, nobody's fault. At all, it just happened. But I got that kick on, which allowed me to get back in the Scotland team. And after 18 months, you might get some players going, "Well, you've left me out for two years. I'm, nah, I don't even feel like I'd party anymore." You go, "Man, yeah. please, that'll do me." And I end up being captain, yeah, <laughs> which was unbelievable, which was great. Um, okay, uh, after this uh, quick break, I'll get Gordon's thoughts on Scotland, England, 10th of June live on STV and uh, there's just one photograph there that I think uh, I've got to ask him the questions about. He's holding the uh, Premiership trophy there as uh, Celtic manager and he spent a few years there. Uh, I don't think too many people in the 80s uh, would have put a bet on at the bookies uh, that Gordon Strachan would be the Celtic manager but he did indeed have um, a trophy laden time at Celtic Park. So we'll get the thoughts of Gordon on Celtic and then we'll also get the thoughts of the Scotland manager on whether we can win at Hamden in front of the Tartan Army. Join us after the break. Welcome back to this Peter and Ruffy football special. Gordon Strachan, the Scotland manager, is a very special bootroom guest. There's a picture there of yeah. Celtic. How did that all come about? Um, I don't go to horse racing. Um, at all. But I went once to Cheltenham with a friend and they, uh, they had a box uh, next to the Irish box and I didn't know anybody. I'd... And then I went out, I heard the brothers singing and dancing and all the rest. And I went and I met Eddie Jordan, who I'd met previous. He says, I've got a guy in there who wants to speak to you. I went, aye, OK. So I went and spoke to a few of them and the other people. The Kevin Moran and Liam Brady and other kind of big guys. He says to me, I, I like your style. I went, aye, very good. Uh, if there was ever a chance that you know, open at Celtic, would you consider it? I mean, because I wasn't working at the time, because I promised to take a year off football yeah. with Leslie. And uh, I went, hi, all right, buddy, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back, and Leslie said, where'd you been? I said, oh, I just met a drunk guy, he asked me if I wanted to be the Celtic manager. <laughs> just keep knocked it on the head, and then you get a second thought. But he wasn't he drunk? Um, and uh, unfortunately, Geraldine wasn't he well, and that man had to take a spell of um, uh, football. And I got the call on it. I thought, yes, yeah, brilliant. And then I realised, ah, oh, I'm following Martin O'Neill. Oh, that's a great. <laughs> I wish it was a really rubbish manager I could follow. And this could be unfortunate, you know. Um, but best, one of the best things I've ever done. Um, because I joined a club that's uh, is special. And uh, if you do well especially, you become part of that family. And uh, then you talk about no walking alone. You don't it, when you become Celtic manager, especially if you won a few trophies, that wherever you go in the world, you'll meet one. You've yeah. always got a mate hanging around the corner that wants to speak to you. But, yeah, there's always a Celtic supporter about there, so that's a, the huge bonus. And, and the bonuses I, I picked up was working with some great players, great, great times, great coaching staff, Tommy especially, because we all know Tommy, we all love Tommy, but just something else. That was it. That was the, the crowd did the three people together to make it look like a crowd. They <laughs> um, herded them together. Um, so... Um, it was one of the best decisions. It wasn't easy. It's not an easy job. It's not an easy job. 
and there's, there's days where it's a very, very lonely job. Um, but for the moments that you can, you can share the happiness with your players and the staff and the, and the fans, it's well worth it. Yeah, well, trophies, winning premierships, great. Um, we had to win it back. That was a thing, you know. Yeah. It's um, we had to win it back for a good Rangers team. But it was also a decent Hearts team at the time. Remember the, the, that the cash injection they had there, players there, and a fabulous Hibs team. Yeah. I mean, I look at that Hibs team. We had Whitaker at right back, Gary Colwell sitting half, Big Jones, Murphy who went to Birmingham for uh, a million and a half. Then a midfield of Thompson, Brown, Bezelin. Um, O'Connor, Fletcher <coughs> and Riordan. Mm. Now that's not bad, that. Yeah. You know, so there's, there was good teams going about the time. Yeah. The, was the ultimate high for you getting Celtic to the last 16? Um, and the low. Yeah. Seriously, the low at the same time. Um, because we, we should have had a penalty uh, just before the extra time over the San Siro. And um, if we, that was, and, and Naka would have scored that and we'd have been through it the last eight which is fantastic. But then they scored a wonderful goal with Kaka, where, if you remember, Lenny was in reverse. <laughs> I remember him running and, away. Yeah, and, and the referee booked him for time-wasting. <laughs> um, but it was, it was, it was it's such a great experience because there's absolutely no doubt about it. And I've been a, bit, you know, a, a, a European night at Celtic Park against a big side is the best you'll ever get. Mm. It's a wonderful, wonderful you, thing. You went on record when you left saying that four years at any big club is a long time. <laughs> yes. uh, do you still agree with that? Aye. Or, or should you? Yeah. Unless it goes, was, unless it goes terrifically was, well. everybody was astounded when you left. You know, everybody was making up their own idea of why you left, no. when you left, that kind of thing. Funny, I've had the same conversation with somebody about leaving Southampton yesterday. Yeah. And there's rumours that you're like, I couldn't have been happier. It just so happens that I promised that I was going to take time off in football. It was the same when I got to sell. The, the I, I actually said three years. Yeah. Because and it's, after we went, because it was that stressful. But again, it's worthwhile at times. But it was unfortunate that Tommy passed away. And um, I, I felt it would be unwrong. It would be wrong for me to move away for something, something so tragic. And for me to walk away just because I said that, I felt that it wouldn't be right for the club to, to lose that man. And our manager, listen, he was so big about the place. And one of the best things that ever happened to me was meeting him. So I couldn't leave it that, just for, for being a selfish reason. So that's why I stayed in that. And I'm glad I stayed another year, because we played the Rangers in the League Cup final, and we won that. You know, we, we got beat the league in the last day, uh, which is unfortunate. But again, we had some good experiences. Let me finish by uh, talking about the biggest game. Um, we're going to be there. We're going to be rooting for you. Um, do you go into it with any kind of trepidation? No, I'm getting more excited. Um, every time somebody speaks to me about it, I get more excited. And it's getting closer. Because there's a point where it seems so far away. And now, this morning we were working and talking about squads and the training sessions and what we have to do. And it, I'm getting more and more excited all the time. Then I look back at the game we played there and I thought there's loads of things we did right there. If we can take the things that we did right. I had a couple of passes then we'll be fine. Uh, and what we're needing is, is the guys to produce, produce their best, because they have to produce their best, everyone else. One, one or two might not produce their best, but their job then is to be real good teammates. So I have no fear of the game whatsoever. The, the closer it gets, the more exciting it gets. And then the day before the game, you go, ooh, this is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you look at what can happen about that time. But before that, I just really enjoy being with the players. Uh, the bonus is sometimes when a player emerges yeah. and gives you food for thought. Stuart Armstrong, oh. magnificent debut. Uh, there's another <coughs> player that we'd written off uh, last summer. Callum McGregor suddenly come to the fore. Uh, are there players out there now that you're thinking could give you a decision to make for this big game? Well, Stuart was a bonus because Stuart's, with the help of Brendan, he's changed his course off. But I, I think talking to people, he's always worked at his fitness and things like that again. His fitness, it wasn't his ability that decided the game has passed. It was his fitness to do that in eight to eight minutes, to beat a couple of people, and then be able to thread the ball through because he was fit enough to do that. Some players, too tired to do that, miscue the pass, oh, it nearly got there. He's changed, but we all, well, most of us thought his best position was in the midfield three, because he played previous out in the left there, and he wasn't really, but being the man he is, Stuart, he just got to play me anywhere, I want a game, which, which we all like, but when he got into that midfield three, then he just took off, and his power, he actually, people say, he actually outruns people, I watch him, and people just go, I've had enough, because yeah. a lot of midfield players, like David Silver, waits till the ball gets to him, there's some players that, 
he runs 30 or 40 yards to receive it and then runs another 20 yards and people just go, I've had enough. Yeah. But his, his physical ability, along with his technical ability, made that go for Chris Martin. England, full of players that, um, you know, they've got top quality. Yeah. They're playing in one of the most exciting leagues in the world. Most competitive, I think. Yeah. 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 Um, should we fear them? Do you go into this thinking you're at home? Do you take the game to? Do you change the tactics from Wembley? Well, you look at that, and um, but sometimes you want to change the tactics, and you've not got the players to fill that tactics, or you have tactics that then you've got two of your best players sitting beside you, and you go, right, I'm not comfortable with this. Um, so you you think it's something when you put it down in paper. Sometimes it doesn't work, um, but I'm, I'm going to take a lot of what happened in the last game that we played. I think the players had no fear especially midfield players and the attackers had no fear about when the other team got, got the ball, they went after them and they didn't worry about what was behind them. They got on with that to make sure the ball didn't go that way. Some people get in the halfway house, but I better not go near them. They get their head up and start passing through. Yeah, that, they had no fear. So we take a bit of that. There'll be a point where we have to go and do a bit of that where we have to go and sit back in for a while. So we have to be ready for that because it's very hard to keep doing that all the time. Yeah. So we have to be able to deal with times when we've not got the ball. They'll have the ball more than us. It, but then when... We, when, when the uh, we have the ball. We have got to be on our have no fear and just play the game. Is it winner bust for the country? Is it winner bust for you? Uh, I don't know. I've no. I've no fear about me. That's. I can always come back here and do this. No, um, <laughs> You've got the chair. <laughs> and I've got. I, uh, I have the fear of not having getting three points. I have the fear of not qualifying for the World Cup. And as for the fear of me not being the Scotland manager. That doesn't even come into my head. I've just had a career that it's just been fantastic. But I'd love, I'd love to be able to take the nation into, into something we can all be proud of. Um, so that's my only worry. I'm, I'm oblivious to anything else that goes on. Yeah, well, I, I have to say, Ruffy, and I'm sure I speak mm -hmm. for all the nation, fiercely patriotic as we are, um, on a personal level, we hope you do it. We hope you're still there. Um, we want Scotland to win against England because that's just in our nature anyway. It's <laughs> in <laughs> um, everybody's nature. Yeah, so England. Only, um, we're, we're all behind you for it from everybody on the football show. Gordon, I could have made three or four shows with this. It's been an absolute yeah. joy. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Alan. Thank you. Brilliant. Cheers. Thank, Thank you very man. much. Very good. Uh, that's it. Um, it's a special with Gordon Strachan. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Get your tap and scarf on if you can't. Be at the game. Join us on STV 10th of June. Uh, Ruffy will be alongside me. We'll have a couple of characters who know what it's like to pull on a Scotland jersey uh, and they'll be talking some sense as well and we'll be cheering Gordon Strachan Scotland on hopefully to victory from everybody on the football show. Good night.